What are you going to do? Will you die or will you fight? Do you think being a hero is someone else's duty? So long as you choose your own fate, you can call us anytime. We will never abandon the weak who want to fight. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we are going to be delving into one of the most mysterious organizations within the series, the Revolutionary Army. The Revolutionary Army are a powerful militaristic organization that exists outside of the two most commonly explored factions in the series, being pirates and those aligned with the world government. In fact, even more so than pirates, the Revolutionary Army views the world government as their strict enemy, and their goal is to overthrow the world nobles who currently preside over the majority of the planet. The organization was founded by its supreme commander, Monkey D. Dragon, a man who very much remained shrouded in mystery himself, but he began his crusade due to his utter disgust in regards to the hedonistic nature of the world nobles, as well as the lesser nobles who directly rule the various individuals individual nations of One Piece. As a result of these continued actions working towards the direct destabilization of the world government, Dragon was deemed their greatest enemy as well as became the most wanted man in the world. As for exactly when the Revolutionary Army was formed, it's a bit vague at the stage of this recording, but it was somewhere between 19 and 24 years ago. So they've been operating for around two decades and as such, they've had a pretty strong presence in the world. For example, a contingent of the Revolutionary Army were present 12 years ago in the Goa Kingdom in East Blue, where they managed to save the citizens of the Grey Terminal who were going to be burnt alive at the direction of the Goa Royal family. And that sort of blatant disregard for human life is really what drives Dragon and the other Revolutionary Army members to fight. Despite that, it should be noted that they do only conduct strategic intervention, so as not to draw too much attention to themselves. For example, in the aforementioned situation with the Goa Kingdom, whilst he managed to save many citizens, Dragon admitted that he did not have the power to change its ruling system. And this is more than likely not a reference to direct power, as his forces more than likely could have occupied the island, but that would then make both Goa and the Revolutionary Army a massive target to which the full force of the world government would be deployed to wipe them out. Instead, the primary focus of the Revolutionary Army for the past two decades or so has been on stockpiling weapons and recruiting members in order to build a force capable of a direct attack against the world government. And in regards to their recruits, the army has developed quite a fighting force, including their chief of staff, Sabo, a former noble of the Goa Kingdom who became ashamed of his heritage and who was saved by Dragon. Sabo also happens to be the sworn brother of a certain Monkey D. Luffy, the son of Dragon. Below Dragon and Sabo, the Revolutionary Army has four commanders, being Karasu, Bello Betty, Morley, and Lindbergh, each of whom direct the North, East, West, and South armies, respectively. Each of these individuals possesses exceptional abilities that are integral for the army to thrive and survive. And I'd like to draw particular attention to the devil fruit power of Bello Betty in regards to this, which is the Kobu Kobu no Mi, a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to awaken the latent physical potential of others and inspire them to fight, making it a perfect addition to an organization whose goal it is to overturn tyrannical rule on the masses. Below the Commanders, there are also several high-ranking officer positions consisting of some highly influential people in the One Piece world. For example, we have Emporio Ivankov, Queen of the Kambaka Kingdom, as well as Inazuma, who serves as Ivankov's second in command. Then there's Bartholomew Kuma, who is a warlord of the sea under the world government and a former king himself. And the final known officer at the time of this recording is Koala, a former slave of the world nobles who was freed as a result of the actions of Fisher Tiger. In any case, under the direction of these individuals, the Revolutionary Army has been conducting covert operations within the world for the last two decades. But it was only recently in the grand scheme of things that they were identified as a major threat to the world government, which occurred six years ago at the Reverie, where Dragon was personally mentioned by Thalassa Lucas, as someone who would likely become a true threat to the world government in a few years' time. And oh, how right he was. As a result, the world government began actively targeting the Revolutionary Army where possible, often sending cypherpole agents after them, with one example being when Jabra, Kumadori, and Fukuro were sent to assassinate three important army figures within a certain district, a mission that can be assumed to be somewhat of a success, albeit at the cost of 20 more lives in collateral damage, due to Fukuro opening his zipper mouth and leaking their assassination plot all over town. However, for the most part, operations of the Revolutionary Army have been quite successful, and a lot of that can be attributed to the secrecy of their headquarters, which was located on the island of Baltigo, and is actually so secretive that even we as an audience don't know anything about its location, other than the very vague fact that it is indeed somewhere within the Grand Line. But with their center of operations completely shrouded, the Revolutionary Army have been capable of organizing full-scale revolutions in all sectors of the world, including infiltration-style missions, such as sneaking Emporio Ivankov and Inazuma into the world's most secure prison in Pearl Down, in order to gather a force of prisoners ready to break free at the right time. Although this occurred rather prematurely due to the actions of Monkey D. Luffy, the army holds a further association with Straw Hat member Nico Robin, whom they freed from slavery on the massive bridge nation of Tequila Wolf in East Blue. In fact, due to Robin's knowledge gained from being an inhabitant of the former island of O'Hara, they even asked her to join their cause, referring to her as the light of the revolution. And while Robin did decline, she would end up spending the next two years with the army during the time Skip. However, the operation that we would become most familiar with, when a small contingent of revolutionaries, including Sabo, Koala, and Hack, were sent
sent to the island to investigate and uncover the black market dealings of Warlord of the Sea, Dolphamingo. During this mission, the three of them became embroiled in the sheer chaos caused by the Straw Hats, Trafalgar Law, and the various other parties present on the island, which resulted in the defeat of Dolphamingo and the acquisition of all of the black market weaponry present on the island. Rather unfortunately, this mission would also result in the discovery of Baltico's location by Jesus Burgess, a member of the Blackbeard Pirates who stowed away on their ship, and the base was promptly attacked and destroyed by the Blackbeard Pirates. As for why Blackbeard and Emperor of the Sea had such a stake in declaring war on the Revolutionary Army, well, that is one of the many questions surrounding the army that is still currently unanswered. And it is here that I'm going to throw up a spoiler warning for the events of the Reverie and Wano arcs. If you are not up to date with both of these arcs, and I highly recommend you mute this video until the spoiler warning goes away, because what I'm about to say is not an insignificant spoiler. But for the rest of you, here we go. Following the destruction of Boltigo, the location of Momoiro Island under the rule of Emporio Ivankov was chosen as the new base of operations for the army, who were planning an imminent attack on the upcoming reverie. As such, the Revolutionary Army mustered its full forces and infiltrated the Holy Land of Marijuana, with one of their primary goals being the rescue of their comrade, Bartholomew Kuma. And on the fourth day of the reverie, the army sprang into action, facing off directly against two admirals of the Marines, Fujitora and Ryokugyu. And at the time of this recording, the outcome of that battle, as well as the fate of the Revolutionary Army in general, is unknown. Some more fun facts about the Revolutionary Army. Despite having the world government as a mutual enemy, revolutionaries and pirates rarely cooperate, and in fact on many occasions pirates are also seen as enemies of the army due to the general tyranny that they cause the citizens of the world. With that said, there have been situations in which they have joined forces with pirate factions should it be in the interests of accomplishing their goals. Dragon's influence over the revolutionary army can be clearly seen in their official flag, which displays a dragon in between the letters R and A. Although it should be noted that in the past they have been identified by a simple red triangular flag. And finally, a truly useless fact. The Revolutionary Army is actually so widespread that it even has its own non-canon member, being Ray's Max, a gambler who was imprisoned by Guild to Zorro in One Piece Film Gold. But that pretty much does it for the Revolutionary Army. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.